Okay, so one of the things that came out after you wrote The Observer was this news that uh, uh, Riley is out at Warner Media, and he was a big part of getting AEW on to TNT. And he was he was, he was the guy. He was their angel. Not only not only was he the guy who green lit it, but he was le- like legitimately the guy in the conversation when Tony Khan decided to go with AEW. So the, the genesis, I know a lot of people like that story of the tweet that I sent to Cody Rhodes, and that was the genesis of All, all, all In. Um, and All In absolutely played a huge part, but Tony Khan was thinking about doing wrestling before All In. I mean, All In absolutely helped, but the, the story of AEW essentially starts... Uh, with the Kenny Omega Chris Jericho match at the Tokyo Dome, and a conversation a couple months later, um, where where Tony Khan just sees these two guys have this match that was bigger than any match and provably moved numbers. You know, moved American subscriptions to New Japan World. There was never a match in Japan ever that had this kind of um, interest in the United States in in pro wrestling. Uh, so. He kind of knew that. And then a couple months later, uh, Tony Khan and Kevin Riley, who were friends, had a meeting. And Kevin Riley told him, you know, like uh, he was basically telling about the Fox and the USA negotiations for WWE, which he was involved in because they were probably in some form, you know, discussing it, you know, um, as well. But they weren't going to get either one because they weren't going to go that high. But he was saying like, you know, man, I, you know, because he knew that Tony Khan was a big wrestling fan. It's like, man, this WWE TV stuff is is going to, you know, they're getting so much money. And it was kind of like and Tony Khan was like, well, you know, what about maybe you can get your own wrestling group? And that's they, you know, and, and it was basically he followed it and knew that. Chris Jericho was a free agent, even though he was very loyal to Vince at the time. Kenny Omega was going to be a free agent at the end of the year um, because they all those New Japan guys had one year contracts. And similarly, you know, I guess he was aware of the Young Bucks. And that was like the key was, you know, that he knew of that. And then when All In is a big success, you know, then they have tangible proof. This thing sold out in 30 minutes or whatever it was. And the show was fantastic. And they're, you know, Tony Khan's at the show, you know, and and by this point, Tony Khan's already friends with a lot of those guys, especially like Matt Jackson and some others. And, you know, and it was his private plane that got Jericho to his 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 concert gig, you know, for Jericho to do the run in the in the Omega match. And um, so so anyway, the um, at this point. You know, November is when they started having the meetings with TNT. So he's armed with this successful show and the promise of these are the guys who are going to be my nucleus. And and at the time, I think the Young Bucks were pretty much going to be with him. But, um, you know, and Cody, but, you know, Omega, you know, Omega had a lot of offers, obviously, and was, you know, on good terms at, at that time with New Japan. And and Jericho was very much a question mark. But, you know, these were the guys he was going to get. And he, every, everyone he wanted, I would say, with the exception of Punk, he got. And, you know, then, you know, they, you know, TNT agreed to put them on for this, you know. And, and, and it was, you know, no risk for TNT because they were, they didn't, you know, they were paying for production. So it was a low, it was a, it was getting into wrestling at a relatively low price, you know, splitting the ad revenue. Um, and then, you know, it was a big hit. And in January, they tore up the contract. They had a two-year deal. They tore up, signed a new four-year deal, which, thank God, they did. Because, you know, I, I'll tell you what, that, you know, I, I, I've told people before. that, that And now it's even more important. The ability that signing that four year deal at the time, right before the pandemic, because during the pandemic, they would not have been able to do it, most likely, um, you know, it, it allowed them to go through this pandemic and, and, and live, you know, or else they would have been up shit creek, you know, perhaps um, financially they would have been this. This allowed them financially to get through the pandemic. Um, and now now Kevin Riley's out. And so everything is different. And um you know, as far as what that means, nobody knows. It could be, you know, 
Garrett, you've you've worked in companies when when and so have I, where management changes and it it doesn't even matter. You're like, you know, you're with the old you're you're the 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 the, the star with the old management that almost can work against you. Oh yeah, you know, and and but in this case, yes, their numbers are successful. So I mean, that's um, you know, especially you know, especially this last week. Um, but you know, they're they're, I mean. It looks good on paper, but I I've, I've seen TV companies that you know it's somebody else's project, um, and it's not your project. I mean, one of the one of the deals you know with Kevin Riley is that this was you know one of his gigs, like Kevin K with UFC. It's like Kevin with when UFC came aboard. I mean, it was a time buy at first, but Kevin K got the credit. He was the one who first put UFC on Spike. And so he became an, you know, that was part of his calling card in his history, in his resume. The guy who put UFC on television for the first time, you know, took the chance on UFC. And with Kevin Riley, it was the guy who, you know, took the second wrestling league and and put it on TV. And it was a big rating success. So a new guy, you know, is a new guy going to have all those plugs during NBA broadcasts? I don't, I don't know. Maybe they still will. But everything in that sense, you know, it, it, it puts it like it's like it's not good news. It may not be bad news, but it's absolutely not good news. Is I guess the, the way to put it. It could be bad news, but we we don't know, and and it just depends on the new people in charge and their thoughts on wrestling, and you know, again, their understanding of wrestling. Um, and they may, you know, they may feel differently about aspects of wrestling, or maybe they'll just go look at it and just go we've got nothing, you know, that's, that's reaching 18 to 34s. And these guys are doing such a great job with 18 to 34s. And it's a good thing to keep on our schedule. Or they may just go, it's wrestling. You know what I mean? You know, and, and leave it at, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen. But, um, you, but you would think that based on the analysis that you did in the observer with the, the demographics that TNT has NBA basketball and AEW, hitting that demographic pretty well. And so the crossover seems natural to, to me just based off of that information. Well, cross-promotion cross seems natural. 